I'm going to transition. So here we go. We've got uh, John on the screen. This thing Hi. works. This thing works. And Shane is with us as well. Hello. Uh, and uh, we'll get we'll get somehow the other video going as well. Um, I've got your video going on a different uh, scene in OBS, Shane. So you will you'll come around. But first, we want to spend some time talking to to John about what the what the heck just happened today. It's, you know, oh my gosh, it's like we just we just doubled in the number of screens that we can run on. <laughs> so many screens. So maybe many screens. maybe we can, it's it's like the trend of cameras on phones, right? It's like just add more screens, add more cameras. Oh, so we're about I mean, to have three screens? Uh, maybe, so yeah, I don't that's know. That's a heck of a, yeah. It's starting Service to feel like trio. the old Rubik's Cube uh, thing. What was, that, what was that Rubik's Cube thing that was like a flat sheet and you just kind of bent it and bent it? Yeah, I don't know. Mobile Home says I'm quiet. Comparatively. All right, let's see what we can do about that. Hmm. Cheat them back that way. Oh, I have, I have another control. Hang on. Boom. Oh, that was even, that was too loud. That's crazy, crazy loud. Boom, okay, cool. Oh, hey, there's Shane. Shane took over because he was making so much noise. Click, That's click, right. click, click. So it's the active speaker <laughs> that takes over that video. That's fun. All right, so uh, Shane, why don't you mute yourself and then we'll, that'll bring John back once John says uh, something. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so what, so what do you want to talk about today? Do you want to talk about Multiple screens, dual I screens. Do. I do. I want to talk right. about dual screens. So uh, I'll give the introduction here for everybody. <laughs> Easy says, if this trend continues, it'll be millions of screens soon. Absolutely. More screens, more better. Um, but yeah, so what we did, uh, what the Xamarin team did and what the Windows team did and what Microsoft did today uh, is shipped an Android SDK for the Surface Duo. And uh, what this allows you to do today is to get up and running building Android apps for this new device. So you get the SDK, you get the emulator, you get the docs, you get some samples. And the great thing is, is that not only do you get the native Android SDK samples with Java, I assume they're in Java, I didn't actually look at them. Are they Java oh, yeah. or they Kotlin? Yeah, yeah they're, Java. They're, they're Java. I mean, okay. you can do it in Kotlin, but... Yeah, and so, you know, of course, we, we don't really prefer to write uh, Java. We prefer to write some C-sharp and .NET code. So, uh, okay. yeah, so John and team and Shane and, and others contributed, and we now have the uh, .NET equivalent so that you can be doing this for Android and Xamarin Forms as well. So I want to kick it off, John, by having you kind of talk through what's the setup, what's this thing look like, what are the dependencies, how easy is it to get started, show us maybe the docs, um, yeah. and yeah, take it from there, and then we'll and then we'll kick it later over to Shane, and I'll start watching the uh, chat here. Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously the, the Duo was announced a, a little while ago, along with the Neo, um, and we kind of got a glimpse of what that would look like and how those devices would work, and we had some maybe ideas and some demos of what apps looked like on them. Uh, but of course, today you actually get to play with an emulator for the Duo, and you get to start running your your apps on it. So if you go to the the documentation page, well, first I, I should say that we have a blog post out. So if you go to the Xamarin blogs, um, David's put together this lovely doc blog post, and uh, we've got links to it. Uh, there's an official blog post on the uh, native Android side as well. So if, you know, we tab over to that one. They've got some interesting stuff there, but. I think um, for, for us Xamarin folk, all the relevant information is in this blog post. And this will get you uh, kicked off to the um, to the idea of, like, what does this look like for these devices? What kind of patterns do we use? Um, and there's some kind of prescriptive uh, ways to deal with making apps and use those two screens to their fullest advantage. Now, if you go over to the documentation here, and, and, and the blog post has some sample code and stuff, and we can, we can look at that a little bit more thoroughly. I think maybe Shane's going to open up some code for us a bit later yet too. Um, but if we go over to the documentation, uh, you know, we, we get to the this whole Microsoft site of uh, dual screen devices and what that looks like. And I was mentioning the different idioms and patterns that, that we talked about here and improving and embracing the duo dual screens in your apps. And you can certainly read through this. I'm not gonna go through it all with you here, but let's, let's get into what it actually looks like to set up your environment to, to test this out. Cause I think that's what most of you are here for probably. Um, so first of all, we've got you know a few links on the side here. So you need to go get the Surface Duo SDK. That's that's step one. 
And um, it's relatively simple. We can kind of skip down uh, a little ways to the download link. So you're going to go download the SDK. Um, it's going to download an, an executable that you run, and it's going to install the Surface Duo SDK uh, if you're using Windows. If you're using Mac, uh, you'll get a basically a big zip file with the SDK that you can extract. And once you've done that, we can go figure out, oh, how do we use this in our app? Well, um, on the Xamarin C Sharp tab here, it's really simple. We have a NuGet package to install in your application. It's the Xamarin.duo SDK. And you know, make sure you're using the, <clears throat> the version here that we published or higher. And it's just as simple as including that in your app. And we'll talk about some of the APIs in a second here. But basically, everything lives under this Microsoft device display um, namespace. Now, before we actually can use the emulator, uh, we have to do a little couple extra steps here for Xamarin developers. So, I mean, this is a public preview. It is a very early preview. Um, so there are a few edges that we need to smooth out. Um, that's OK. It's really, really not that bad. Uh, so after you install it on your device, and we can just click down here to the Xamarin Developer section. Um, basically, if you're on Windows, you need to go find the installation location of this thing. Um, you know, so you can you can go put that in your uh, start bar and, and find it and open it up. And inside of that folder, there will be a um, actually let's let's just do that. So inside this folder, there is an artifacts folder. And in this artifacts folder, you've got all of these different batch files to run things. And what I did here earlier is I took a copy of this run.bat file, and I pasted it, and I named it run Android Studio because that's kind of the default configuration. I didn't, you know, I wanted to keep a backup of the file. Um, and then I went in and edited this file here. Uh, let's open it in code. And it's a big batch file. And so there's a couple things to do here. First of all, let's go back to the documentation. You really just need to take this whole thing, copy it, and paste it over into the um, into the appropriate file. And so I've done that already. And then you want to make sure that your SDK location is correct up here. Now, this is the uh, default SDK lo location that we install Xamarin to on your Windows machine. Uh, so it should probably be correct, but it's worth double checking. Uh, and then you should be really good to go. Save this file, and we can start up our emulator. We can start running the emulator. Yeah, I um, noticed when I did that, John, that I, I got it wrong. I got my location wrong initially. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And the good news is is that when you do go to run that bat file on Windows or the shell file on Mac, it yeah. tells you, hey, I can't find yeah. the emulator. So let me tab over here. The Mac instructions are similar, but it's a, a shell file, uh, a bash file instead. And again, you know, we try and guess where, whoop, where that default location is, and it should be correct for most people, but you'll want to double check that just to make sure. Um, so once you've done that, I mean, you can start. There's a shortcut that you can start. I've got a, a, a window here because I like to see what's going on in the, in the console when I run it. So I can just run this thing, and it should start up for me right away here. And it remembers that I still had an app running even. So that's kind of fun. Love that um, so yeah. speed right there. That's great. Yeah, no, it's fast, right? And like it's, you know, it's actually uh, it's doing its thing. It's kind of nice. Um, so let's, you know, let's go to the, the home screen here where it should be doing its thing. Watch now. I'm going to have to re reset the emulator or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, that is that is something I ran into yesterday. Yeah. Was, uh, it froze up on me. I couldn't figure out why my emulator wasn't active in my my device drop down. And so, yeah, they have that run clean dot yeah, that so you can do. Run clean. I also noticed that. that I, I know there's a shortcut that it puts on your desktop. Yeah. Uh, or that we put on this. But I find I find that I have more success doing it this way through the command line. Okay. I, I just, I, you know, I like to see what's happening here in case something is going wrong. Gives you some clues as to what, you know, the console might say something. Um, so still, you know, even a clean boot isn't isn't that bad. So it's, it's kind of nice. It's, it's all right. All right. So, you know, we've got our, our uh, emulator here. Um, we could start to run some apps in it at this point. Um, let's go back and talk just a little bit first about, like, what the, the actual API looks like. Um, so there's some, if we go back to our documentation here, um, and actually, one other thing to note, in Visual Studio, for now, this is going to be what your device name shows up as, this build in angle brackets. And it shows you the Android version and API level. Um, we're working on that. We've got a, a, you know somebody already taking a look at that in Visual Studio uh, and hoping that we uh, also bypass this entire step of changing the, um, you know, the, the run script and stuff, too, in the future. But for now, it's a, it's a way to work around it. And it's not that bad. And we already got it up and running. So. Let's take a look at um, 
the actual API usage to the reference. Um, so there, there's a couple different concepts here. <clears throat> so you see this black bar in the middle here, right? So this is what we're referring to as the hinge. And on Android, the hinge is kind of special in that you can think of this Android device as one giant screen. And this hinge actually sits on top of that screen. Now, on your actual physical device, that hinge is like it's a physical gap. Like it, it's not, you know, there's obviously not a, a screen bent behind that hinge. But your app, uh, when it's running, it looks to your app like, hey, this is just one big screen with a hinge mask over it. And we call that, uh, it's like a display mask. And that's the terminology that they're using. Uh, it's similar to, to how you would have like a notch display mask cut out. Um, so part of part of the API here is helping us understand what are the coordinates of this hinge, this display mask, so that we can make choices to appropriately um, display our content around it or under it or you know whatever the case may be. Because so that real estate our... does exist, right? E exactly. Yeah, and we'll see that in some of the demos too. So if we go to our uh, display mask, um, this is um, the the API here for this uh, uh, display mask class. And basically you can create an instance of it from you know, a particular context. Um, there's a couple methods here to kind of help you get that mask information back. Uh, there's some methods to get the, like, the bounding rectangle for it, uh, the bounding rectangle for a given uh, or orientation, rotation. Uh, the, the interesting thing here is like, we've kind of wrapped these up for you so you don't really have to care so much about these. Uh, this, this will give you the mask uh, for the for the hinge, essentially, this code here. But we also have some helper methods around that um, in this. Uh, we don't see the class here, but there's a class called uh, screen helper. And I can open that up, and we can take a look at that in a second, too. But that helps you actually do some of these basic things. So we'll take a look and see what that looks like. Um, so that's the, the hinge and kind of figuring out, OK, where does that hinge exist on the screen? We also have the concept of the sensor of the, the hinge. So one of the interesting things that you could do is actually start to find like what, how open or closed is that device? And we can get the angle of the openness or closedness, so the angle of the hinge. And that comes in the form of an Android sensor. So it's really just um, you know, uh, this practice of, let me go to the C-sharp version here, um, the practice of like figuring out, OK, what, what is that uh, value? And maybe I want to do something interesting with that value. Uh, you could think of th uh, situations like games or something. Maybe you could incorporate that into it. Uh, so there's some opportunity there to to do some cool things for sure. Uh, and this basically, you just create a new instance of it. We kind of hid some of the code for you behind, like the sensor code, the Android code for you. So all you have to do is create an instance of this class and uh, set up an event to see when the the hinge value changed and figure out what that new value is. Um, so let's go down here a little bit to the code snippets and samples. Um, there's a couple different concepts here. Uh, so one of them is like detecting, you know, you can imagine in your app, like when I open um, just like the, the default, you know, what, any app. Mm -hmm. By default, it's like it's on one screen, right? And now there's this gesture that you can do. Let's see if I can do it. It's kind of tricky sometimes. Oh, this one can't be spanned because mm -hmm. you can yeah, kind of see it's, this. So it's white disabled. and, and it's, typically yeah. it's black if it can be grabbed, right? Yeah, so let's let's find an, an app that can be like the messaging app. So if I can, you know, grab this and make it. So it's kind of tricky to do on the emulator. It's you know, it's not a physical device. So I can span my app, and you can see this is what we were talking about, right? There, the content flows behind the hinge, right? It's a like, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So this app needs to be you know optimized for for dual screen. Uh, come on, Google. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's the emulator. Um, but you can see here that you know we can span devices like this. So one of the, the patterns is we want to be able to detect when the when it's actually spanned across both screens. Mm -hmm. And so if we go back to the the documentation here, it's really easy to do this. Um, again, if we go back to the C sharp way to do this, we have this screen helper class that you can create. Um, you initialize it with a context. So this or like an activity, I think it has to be actually. So you say, hey, in this current activity, uh, let's initialize the screen helper. And it's going to return a Boolean value based on whether or not that was successful. And, and from that value, you can infer, you know, if it's false, then you're not running on a dual screen duo device. And we already know that the app can't be spanned that way. Um, but if it did initialize, 
we can actually use this is dual mode property to detect is the app spanned or not. Um, and then similarly, I was talking about the the display mask and stuff, and in like yeah, there's the you know the display mask API, um, but we've also added some helper methods for you so that you can get a better understanding of what the the actual hinge bounds are. And and I have it in there's a version of this that's in pixels. Um, it's just named this, and then there's the display independent pixels version of that method here as well. So that's kind of nice. The dippy method. Yeah, the dippy method. Um, so yeah, that's the, these are kind of like your main two things that you would want to do with the API. Um, and th there is another thing you can do. You can explicitly detect like, is this a dual screen device? Um, and the interesting thing is on Android, they expose that on the Duo device as a, a hardware feature. And that hardware feature is this particular identifier. Um, so all we have to do is just ask the system, like, do we have this feature? And if we do, then it's a Duo device. If not, it's not. Nice. Shane so that, is uh, Shane's commenting in the chat that uh, the notch is going to be displaced here by the hinge. It's yeah. a new meme. We're all going to have. What if, what if you have both? What if you have a what? What if you have a notch? Well, on I, I cringed when you mentioned the the notch. I'm like thinking to myself, is that is that coming? Are we gonna? Oh boy. <laughs> it may be. It may be. That's okay. Um, Bring it on. We can handle it. And then I, I think the last thing to touch on is there's a number of samples. So the the Duo team on the Android native side, like the Java Android native side, um, they've created a bunch of different samples to kind of take a look at what each of these looks like, what the different patterns look like. So, you know, you have this idea of like, what if you just want one big app that spans the whole screen? Uh, so like a Maps app is maybe an okay uh, version of that. Uh, and that's what that might look like. So they've got a sample in both Java and then we've got the counterpart C-sharp sample. That, uh, and, and in this case, the C-sharp samples are using like native Xamarin Android APIs. So you're using fragments and stuff like that that are Android things. Um, and we've got this master detail sample as well. Um, and this is kind of an, an obvious, you know, the pattern makes a lot of sense here for dual screens where you click on the master item and it changes the deep detail page. Um, we've got the two page example, which essentially is um, like you can think of, I think like a book uh, or some kind of document oriented app for reading things. Uh, dual view, which is similar to the master detail page, really. Um, so you know you can kind of have whatever whatever view on on the one side that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and the dual view, I think, is meant to be more like the details show up, um, you know, if you need them to. And then the companion pane is another similar master detail page thing, but it's kind of like the same idea that the details on the side here show up if there's space for them to show up, and it kind of makes sense to use that extra real estate. So we have C-sharp samples of all of these uh, kind of ported from the Java samples. But then above and beyond that, and actually if we just click out to the, the repo for this, um, so this Surface Duo SDK Xamarin Samples repo, we have here's all of the, the ported sort of native Android, uh, Xamarin Android samples. But then Shane has been hard at work to uh, helping out with the Xamarin Forum sample. Yeah. And the cool thing about this is we have basically the same samples over again, but written in Xamarin forms and using XAML and using Xamarin forms things. So like how you would do those same examples, but from a forms world so that you don't have to deal with fragments and all of those Android things that, I don't know, I, I don't like developing those. I, I like forms, let me use forms, so. <laughs> well, and I think the great thing with forms and, and the question has already been asked, well, what, what about the Neo? There's a Windows 10X device that is coming out at some point. Um, mm -hmm. What are we going to do then? And uh, yeah, this is setting the stage. Everything that you that we'll show you now uh, from the Xamarin Forum side fundamentally should just should just work. Now there yeah. are certainly the sensor aspect of things. The devices are going to present things slightly differently, and so part of our job from the Forum standpoint is going to be um, working to unify that stuff into an experience that works for everybody. Um, so that you can have an app that you deploy once and it'll run and be completely usable on an iOS device, which only has one screen, but also on that Android and on the, and the, both the, the Duo and the Neo. Um, that, let me ask you this. this. is a totally random question, John, but uh, how do you keep the Neo and the Duo separate in your head? Like, do you find yourself saying the wrong thing? I, I, for some reason, I, I don't know. I, I get it right all the time, but I've, I've heard so many people that are like, is that the duo or the Neo? And, um, 
Yeah, no, it's 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 tough to keep them separate. But maybe that's the cool thing about forms. It's like you don't really have to worry about which one's which. Oh, yeah. Ultimately. From the form standpoint, you really don't need to worry about it. And, and we'll do the work again to, to unify yeah. things. For me, it's uh, I, and it totally doesn't make any sense, but it's whatever clicks for your brain, right? Android yeah. has a prominent D in it. And yeah. Duo starts with a D. And so for me, I just about- latched onto that. And that's forever my association, even though there's probably a better mnemonic somewhere. What about Windows? No. <laughs> See, yeah, got a strong yeah, D as well. well. Yeah, that's true. That's why Debunked I say it doesn't theory. really fundamentally make much sense. But <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think like that. That I don't know if you have any more questions about like just general overview of the SDK or anything. But um, yeah, yeah, go check out our samples. Like these should all be pretty much just you, you clone this repo, you run them. If you've done the right Android emulator steps, you should just be able to target. Um, the Android emulator from Visual Studio at that point and run the samples, whichever ones you want. Cool. Well, hang out with us. Let's bring. Yeah. Let's go ahead and bring Shane in, and let's jump over to the forum stuff. So I think, John, if you just mute yourself, and Shane, you do some noise, make some noise, you'll eventually come <clears throat> to the Skype Hello. from the front. All right, let's see. Let me share my screen. Uh, yes, he's here. He's here. <laughs> Um, and so we have some more exciting stuff happening. Uh, uh, so we're building some more, you know, beautiful demos. Um, so be, uh, be looking for that. I can't show you, show that to you now and ruin any good surprises, but, uh, Shane and Javier and, uh, John and myself are all collaborating on a, a gorgeous demo that you'll get to see. Um, all right. So your screen is sharing. I'm going to transition back to the desktop view and Shane, take it away. I'll go back and if anybody has questions, thoughts, come to mind please post them in the chat we already have one question here shane about shell so when you feel like talking about shell (laughs) yeah so the thing we're showing so the thing we're showing right now is how we've um basically tuned so all of these demos are using uh the pre four five pre one sdk so kind of what we're demoing here is how you can enable without us natively without us just without us having to modify the SDK, how you're sort of able to use the current duo APIs um, to achieve what you need. So we didn't want the samples to be dependent on any sort of uh, non-existent APIs yet. Especially uh, as especially during the time here where we're between the, the duo and the neo and we're going to need to figure some things out. I think it's pretty cool that we're able to prove some concepts out here without modifying the core. And then as as we're unifying things to, to go cross platform, we can we can change some things. But you mentioned four or five pre one. Is there something in four or five pre one that's that's important here? Or is that just you're just saying, hey, we're using four or five one? Five, yeah, I was just I was just using the latest because that's that's the gets all gets all the updates for like collection view and carousel view and things. Yeah. So well, we like to dog but, food and, and ride the bleeding edge. Yeah. come on. Cool. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing specific. So um, yeah, but once we start enabling these more into the SDK, uh, so for example, shell because shell kind of fits the paradigm pretty well because it's a declare since it's kind of a declarative structure. The idea is that we want to be able to that you could annotate different aspects of the shell so that it would sort of just conform automatically uh, to these two pain devices. <clears throat> so um, yeah, we're still kind of baking through some of those APIs. But um, yeah, so we basically here just took the the same samples uh, that John was demonstrating and, and purposed them for forms. Uh, so the two page one I feel is a compelling is a really cool sample here uh, because it shows it shows some really cool features with the collection view uh, that were created that that just kind of work super well with the hinge and things like that. So you can see um, as I'm scrolling this, this is basically using like a snap point alignment, uh, which is just telling it to snap each item. So as you're scrolling it, it's just snapping each page. Uh, and then you have the middle part here um, splitting your pages. And then what we have it do is when you transition to a different layout, it crashes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, that's funny. I tested this like 10 times before I went on to make sure it was all working. Uh, um, you wore it out. <laughs> yeah, so, but 
All right, let me show you. Yeah, but if you transition to uh, portrait, you can see it shifts to a mode that's um, that's not snapping. So it's one where you just have the pages listed. So it's 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 kind of showing these different. Let's see if it transitions here fine. If it's being buggy, all right, there we go. So then when I go to portrait, you see it switches back to this mode here. Um, hey, scoot your emulator a little bit to the left. Uh, maybe I'll need to resize your uh, your screen while you're talking. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's kind of the idea here. And then just to kind of show a little bit of code real quick, uh, the neat idea here is that this is most of the code that's needed for um, the uh, the setup for the collection view because you you basically just have to set up the hor the horizontal item spacing to the hinge width, uh, then set up the width of your um, content basically to uh, the frame. So this is the the how large each of the different panes are, and then it at that point automatically sizes. Um, yeah, so we kind of we created these classes that will eventually kind of bake into forms um, a bit more to kind of get some of these properties. But a lot of the samples right now are pulling from this duo page that I've created, uh, which exposes a, uh, a forms window property. And that what that's basically doing is giving us APIs that we can watch that tell us things like um, when the pain uh, when the pane sizes are changing, when orientation is changing, when landscape is changing, uh, things like that. Um, can you go back to the uh, the XAML you were showing that had the the content width? Yeah. I wanted Oops. to ask some questions. So the forms window really is the 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 display of the forms app. That is, <clears throat> there's there's only ever one window displayed at a time, right? Yeah, and so I mean, we've been talking about creating something like this in forms um, that we want to add, like something that's attached to the page that we call the forms window, especially once we start looking at multi window. So this is sort of like a, a uh, this is a a first alpha version of this idea that we can, we're going to start looking at. Um, so there's there's things like this which are interesting because we can add uh, data into here as far as like. Is that like the tab bar size, the um, you know, like the tab bar size or like the nav bar size? So in my scenario here, the main thing I was using it for was to get the the available content area, um, so that we could calculate out uh, the two different panes. So like John was saying, is that this is basically so this is essentially one content page that you're seeing. Uh, and then what it does is it, it takes it does some calculations it's based on the content area. So it pulls out the content area, and then we use the hinge service to tell us, okay, where's the hinge? What's the width of it? All right, so now given that data, how wide is how wide and tall is our pane one, and how wide and tall is our pane is our pane two? Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, I have this duo page working so that you can nest this in any page type, and it'll adjust this content uh, correctly. OK. Um, and uh, in the item template, back in that collection view sample, you are binding to the content width. But that width is the width of the pane? OK, so yeah. the source. OK, so the source is the main page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are just properties I added to. Uh, so if you go to the two page here, this is the code behind. You'll see where how these are being calculated. So mm -hmm. the content width is just being mapped to the pane width, because uh, that doesn't the contents when you have it in landscape, mm -hmm. the width of your content is going to be the landscape width, and when you have it in portrait, the the width is still going to be the the width of your of your pane of of mm -hmm. each window pane. Um, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So that sort of stays constant, but the height here is going to change because if the height if you're in portrait mode your height is just going to be um, this height here, mm -hmm. like that. But if you're in landscape, the height's going to be the sum of both panes together. Yeah, it's going to be the entire pane of the content area is what you want for the height. So that's where I kind of had this, um, this if statement here. So 
yeah, and a lot of this stuff has been pushing some collection view things. So we've been we've been keeping up with some of those things. So like that crash you saw is something we have an issue for, but will be fixed in more of the pre in the more official four or five stuff. Um, so as you can see, what because what I'm doing here, this is the one thing that collection view is having a little bit of um, trouble with is swapping out the layouts. So basically what I'm doing is when you go into landscape, uh, I'm setting it to a linear layout uh, that just has a, has a vertical. And then when it's in portrait, I'm switching it to a grid layout that has a horizontal swipe. Mm. So um, yeah, so it has, it has, it, it, um, it works really well for being, it's very dynamic uh, collection view with being able to sort of articulate these setups. Mm -hmm. um, and so the companion pane also was uh, worked super well with collection view and carousel view. So this was a thing here where you can see I'm just, if I'm as I'm scrolling through this, you can see that that right one is moving as I scroll or if I click this, it changes this. So this is basically a carousel view and a collection view here uh, on the companion window. So if we look at the companion pane, <laughs> What this is using is this is using a two pane view. So what uh, right now we're creating a two pane view that's going to model the Win UI two pane view APIs. Um, but the idea here is that uh, the two pane view like automatically measures itself out correctly. So the first view, the first pane we have is a carousel view, which is just this guy here, and then the second one is a collection view, which is just this one here. Um, and then yeah, and then just using the uh, and then at that point, the two pane view is just going to size these things. Um, it's going to measure these things out correctly. And then from there, you can just, it's just, from there, then it's just a matter of linking things together. So we can just use the video here, which is what we use to get the nice little green thing here. And then um, on the companion pane, like if you look at the back, like this is a pretty cool example because it's pretty minimal. Like if you look at the code behind, there's not really that much code. Um, all I'm really doing with the code here is keeping the things in sync. So if they select, if they scroll on the carousel view, then I just scroll to the current position. Um, if they click on a different inter indicator, then I change the position on the carousel view. And then we've also started exposing some of these properties that you have on the two pane view, which is tall mode. So that's kind of a vernacular thing. Um, they, they call it wide mode and tall mode. So if you're in a wide mode configuration, that's basically double portrait. So that's mm -hmm. like this, like you have two portraits. And then if you're in tall mode, that's when you're spanned, but you're, um, you're, you're, you're holding the device kind of in a landscape. Uh, so yeah, so we've kind of exposed these different properties here where, see, let me see if this one shifts. Yeah, see the collection view need to fix some disposed exceptions on that one. Um, but yeah, so if you if you switch it, uh, you'll notice with the companion pane view, it's um, it does it it does kind of a top bottom display. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas on the uh, the two page demo, let's see if I can. All right, there we go. Yeah, see here on the companion pane, it's showing both views. Whereas you you'll could... see. You could have bound those values together instead of using the property changed, right? Which one for the for the position back there where you're doing the selection changed? You could have just Hold bound on. the uh, position of the uh, carousel view. I don't view. think collection view has a position property. Oh, uh, is that? The I thing? think that's specific to carousel view. Huh. All right. Yeah, see, because that's what I did first is I was binding, I, I tried to do, oh, there's a current item. I just noticed that. So I could do current item because um, carousel view, collection view has selected item, carousel view is current item. So I could bind, I could do a two-way binding with the current item, hmm. um, which I just noticed. So yeah, I just saw that there was the position one. Sure. Um, I was but just yeah, <laughs> yeah, so then that's, so that's, that's that demo. Um, and then the other one, neat one is just the master details, which they showed. So the idea here is just <clears throat> that if you're in spanned mode, then you have this view here where you see both. Uh, and then if you transition to a single pane mode, 
it's it's using more of a navigation concept here. So now it's just using a navigation where you can navigate between the items. And then if you switch back to the double pane, which sometimes it does that to me, if you if you don't put it on the thing correctly, there it goes. Mm -hmm. Then it transitions to being on both of them. So this is like that master details idea, which is sort of a, an inversion of the um, companion pane view. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, for me, that's a very cool, powerful thing that you can do right there with Xamarin Forms that uh, you can be distributing the same app and not have to create something custom for a dual screen device. Your app can be configured just with this little bit of code that you've shown to, to work well, no matter whether you have just the one screen or the two. And, and I know that there are different modes or different uh, positions uh, I can't remember exactly what they call it. I know you said there's like a tall mode and a wide mode, but in terms of like, is it is it positioned as a tent, right? Yeah. Or is it or is it partially folded or is it folded completely open? Um, there are different ways in which because that hinge goes all the way around. And by the way, for anybody listening, I have I have touched uh, some of this hardware and it is amazing. It is really, really nice. The, the build quality is fantastic, and it's not even the final deal. So um, I'm personally very excited about that alone, uh, much less the fact that you can have your Xamarin apps here on day one. Yeah, so those are, I mean, those are most of the samples. Um, the other ones were the basic, the dual view that you saw. There's something that needs to be fixed on the map stuff, but you can see it's kind of this same idea. Got to put in your API key. <laughs> yeah, I, f I was looking for where to put that. <laughs> I didn't quite get it so, added in time. Before. Yeah, the, the interesting thing is like with the samples, um, the, the emulator doesn't have Google Play services on it. Uh, and so we couldn't use like the traditional map view in forms and stuff. So we've, there's like, it, we followed the, the Android native samples where they've got these um, <clears throat> embedded HTML pages and we kind of show that, but you know, ideally uh, in your own yeah, app, you would actually use a map view and it would look uh, uh, how you would imagine it should look in Xamarin okay. Forms with maps. Yeah, I forgot that we had done the HTML page, so I was trying to find in the Android sample, but yeah, I remember you just did it with the script source, so yeah, I won't post that in here on stream, but um, <laughs> <laughs> in theory, yeah, you can kind of see the concept of how it's working. Um, and then the, what was the other one you did? Extended Canvas is the same sort of idea. So once we get those API, once I get those API keys in there, um, they'll work. But yeah, so Extended Canvas is kind of the same idea that I was showing for the, uh, the two page view here. Um, except on his extended canvas, it's more of kind of a landscape one. So mm -hmm. yeah, so those are those are kind of the enabled samples. So the big the big thing here that we wanted to do, um, yeah, the big thing here we wanted to do is just kind of provide a guidance for um, just kind of some stuff to play, you know? So if you kind of pull down our samples, the, the things to look at, and we'll be updating these controls as the days go. So we have some updates to the two pane view already. Uh, that we're working on for some other samples. But um, yeah, the main things that kind of, you can kind of look at are the two pane view and then um, the duo page, which gives you just this forms window property that you can bind out different, that has different, uh, that has different properties you can watch to sort of play with some of your layouts. So is landscape, is span, pane one, container area. So the container area is the page area. This is one that I'd like to expose out on our SDK API, but this is basically the um, the container area is the, a rectangle representing this here. Uh, so basically on our on our platform <coughs> SDKs, there's a, there's a container area property on the page uh, that gets set by like tab pages and navigation pages, and that represents the area that your content can go into. So yeah, and then this the forms window basically just does a bunch of calculations uh, in here you can see to figure out the size of the um, the size of the panes to use. So you can see here like for a portrait for yeah, for landscape here, it's subtracting out a bunch of stuff. So it's subtracting out like the the middle bar, the, it's subtracting out the bottom status bar and a lot of those things. So 
um, yeah, we just kind of wanted to expose some some data out uh, to let people play with these with these features and not have to worry too much about um, calculating out calculating out many things. Cool. Well, I'm obviously super excited. Um, I want to transition over. I'm going to share my screen here real quick. Um, at the bottom of the blog, or near the bottom of the blog here, um, I put out a call right here. I probably should make this a little more obvious, where I'm asking you to schedule a call with me. If you uh, are thinking about targeting these devices uh, for any reason, whether it's a business reason, consumer app, you want to just be there on day one, whatever, please schedule a call with me, and I'll probably rope Shane and John uh, or one of the other into these calls. Uh, because we really want to know, what do you think of these APIs? You get a chance to now download the SDKs and, and use them, take an existing app and see what it takes to enlighten it. Enlighten is the term of making it aware that you have more than one screen. At least I think that's the term. I, I totally take it from context. I don't think I've ever technically seen a definition for what they mean by it or what we mean by it. Um, but you know, if you're thinking about this and you have a real business use case or, or you want to Give us your feedback on these APIs and how we go about uh, surfacing all this stuff in the easiest way possible in Xamarin Forms. Please come talk to me. Um, schedule a call here on the uh, on the thing and uh, on the thing. And this should I think I opened up three days, half an hour calls. Come chat with me. Uh, Lachlan wants to end darken. <laughs> what does that even mean? Where is this thing? Do this. We need to go back to. Yeah, we will have more uh, dark mode, light mode stuff coming uh, in Xamarin Forms. We've been having API discussions specifically about that. Any questions coming from from those of you watching? Um, thoughts? What do you What do you anticipate building here? Anything? <laughs> Again, the hardware is really nice. I'm very excited about that. And I'm excited that Xamarin can, can already run on these things. .NET developers have it all. You've got it all. <laughs> Alan Rich yeah. is getting in trouble, I tell you. Yeah, I mean, the CSS was kind of an interesting one I was talking to David about a little bit. Um, because some of the ways that this these they're going to enable you can enable some of these on on website is going to use like media queries and things. So, you know, we had that was something that uh, we'd sort of even round tabled about. Like on CSS, maybe we could add <clears throat> media queries to our CSS to apply different styles based on modes and things. So, I don't know. It's something. I mean, it's something to look at because uh, that was kind of one of the approaches. We were thinking with some of the forms window stuff as well as using like style triggers uh, that you could bind to the forms window to swap out different styles uh, based on the different modes and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, at this point, really anything's on the table. <laughs> yeah, I think it's as far uh, as so, what to do. Yeah, Andrew mentions uh, like some some advanced dashboards that utilize both screens. I think that uh, so a couple of things because we've talked about this. Um, the question typically comes up, especially from us developers, hey, can I run Visual Studio on this? <laughs> and uh, I, I think that, uh, for especially the Windows device, obviously, Android Visual Studio would be mind-blowing. Um, but uh, these are really not geared towards developer productivity devices. These are geared towards business and personal productivity and, and consumer, make it very interesting. Um, so I think scenarios where, uh, you know, CEO in, in the boardroom kind of situation where they want to have something very portable but yet very usable. I think these devices really target centrally uh, in there. All right, more comments coming in here. <laughs> Dan, Dan Siegel is just angling so that he can use his illustrious position in the community to get, get access to things early. We'll see what we can do, Dan. No promises. I, mean, I, haven't, I have no problem. I haven't even we have touched no one either, so. Yeah. Yeah, we've uh, been angling internally the same, yeah. and we haven't really gotten any further, so. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very limited. They've been uh, obviously guarded closely, as you would imagine, pre-release. Pre um, let's see here. What else do we have? 
so yeah, in terms of first party apps, um, I don't want to steal anybody's thunder, but you can expect to see some announcements coming out and first party apps, I would imagine being uh, delivered on these devices by default. Um, I do know that there are several internal teams that are, I mean, pretty much all the first party apps that you would expect to be there will be there. Um, the NBA app, the basketball app, or does NBA stand for something different? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, game on the left side, stats on the right side. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's definitely a big user case we've been talking about. Companion pain seems like the most enticing one at this point. Like the other ones are, are pretty neat, but yeah, the companion pain is the big one where you start seeing a lot of the consumer advantages. Like even just Twitch, you know, like putting the chat on one side and the uh, the um, video on the other, or anything of that nature. Yeah. Uh, so Lachlan says, "Hey, a music book app with a uh, with the music on one side and then." shortcuts to other tunes and other info on the other i guess it's very yeah i mean i think you can call most of these they feel like companion app but i mean the patterns themselves are really just uh guiding you to creating usable enticing experiences um that doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a control per se that's called companion view or anything like that these are the the companion view the uh the dual view and uh, the expanded view and all those things are really uh, principles um, to guide us. Um, yeah, I think the idea of being able to to consume and track at the same time, we talked about some learning scenarios that would be really interesting. I think would be really interesting. I, I called it really interesting. Shane never technically said that's really interesting. <laughs> I thought you just knew I thought everything you said was interesting by default. Uh, best best uh, compliment <laughs> I think I've received this year. Somebody <laughs> said, uh, Shane's starting to sound like Dave. He he <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's, I think that was a compliment. Maybe it wasn't a compliment at all. I'm pretty sure Easy said it, at least in my, in my recollection. That's the story I'm going with. Uh, is there a release date for the devices? Uh, I'm sure that there is a release date. I have no idea what it is. And I'm, and I'm, I'm absolutely certain I'm not allowed to even guess. Um. <laughs> the sample with the carousel on the left and collection on the right was inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, that one was neat. It, it was really fun putting these together and just seeing how well, like, the carousel and collection stuff fit in there. So, um, yeah, carousel still experimental and things. So there's definitely... Um, we're really trying to push it a bunch with these samples to see uh, where we can really fill out the carousel and make sure it all works. But yeah, it is. it works really well with the collection view and carousel concepts. It was neat just seeing how fast you could put that sample together. So, Yeah, and that, I, I will comment on that. Uh, Shane and John and team were able to bring these samples to life very quickly. Um, which I think is a huge testament to what Xamarin has built foundationally, the architecture of Xamarin Forms and everything. So um, I, I will say this. I, I, what I really want to encourage people with, and I tried to use as much of this language in that blog post as possible, is get creative with this. Do some interesting things. Do some weird things, like make a coloring app or something, uh, make a design app or whatever that side project is that you've been dreaming of doing. Um, because these devices do lend towards consumer uh, experiences and not so much your, just just business. I, mean, I, I think there's plenty of business opportunities here as well. But we tend to uh, ship a lot of samples that are very business forward and not so much uh, go waste some time doing something interesting in an app. Not, not that a music app would be a waste of time. I think that would be really, really cool. I, could I think see, the un uh, underrated thing here too is the hinge sensor. Like you could do some really interesting things with that. So don't don't forget about that API. Like it's easy to think like the two screens, but you have all of that data too with the hinge. Yeah, I think one of the when I saw that we could get that hinge data, one of the things that I suggested was okay if we've got like a video player player, right? And I go to watch the video like this, and the video is on the top screen. As that hinge closes, can I dim this? Or, you know, or maybe even the content shifts and changes depending on the position that I'm in. Like in this mode, I'm likely to be doing one activity, but in this mode, 
I had mode just being a generic term. Maybe I'm doing something different. And this starts to change based on context. Um, yeah, I, so I think that hinge could be really, really cool to play around with. And then again, that tent mode is essentially now you're uh, with a screen here and a screen here. Like Battleship. I mean, who who's somebody has to build Battleship. Has to happen. All right, back in the chat. What else we got? We're just killing time now. We're just having fun. <laughs> Does anybody want to see anything? Oh, Dan Siegel just threw the word skia in there, whatever that means. Is that like ska? Everything. Is that a music style? <laughs> Teasing. Oh, oh, Teasing. And, and essentials. Yeah, we could, we could, uh, we'll have to see what, what Neo looks like for like hinge and stuff. But um, if, if there's an opportunity right. there, yeah, we'll, we'll for sure do it. You know, I, some the, the question did come up from somebody. Maybe it was just in my head. Should we bother building Xamarin Forum samples, given that it's only the Android right now? And the thing is, is we know from talking to customers that very often they will choose Xamarin Forms for the productivity and the joy of using the technology, even if they only end up shipping for one platform. Um, and the added flexibility that as other platforms do come out and you want to support them, you can continue to expand. Um, so it's always an option there for you. Andrew says, yes, Battleship would be a fun project. All right, it's yours. You got it. It's all you. Next week, we'd like to see your Battleships demo. I'll live stream it. Um, is there a mode where you get one screen as a keyboard and the other one as a screen? Um, Shane, are you still uh, screen sharing? Do you want to show what the on-screen keyboard looks like? I think you're thinking of the wrong device. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I know, I know that the uh, the Windows 10 has a keyboard, but there is an on-screen keyboard for Android is, still. Is there? I haven't even played with it on this emulator. Uh, let's see. Is there a specific way to enable the? Uh, you probably would need to hot reload a entry field into your UI and then touch into it, or just or open just, up some other yeah. app. Open some open other app. Messaging app. What did you say, John? You can open the messaging app and just like start typing in a text field. I mean, the hot reload would be more interesting to see. But <laughs> I was I was trying to you know throw that in there. Oh, I guess we could. All to right, show, let's see. to tell everybody it does work. All right. <laughs> let's let's try a, a field here. Entry, entry, right? That's literally all I should have to do. Oh, look at that, and it's even material. There you go. <laughs> look at that Xamarin Forms developer experience. Right? Come on. <laughs> it was nice. so fluid. <laughs> so it looks like, is the keyboard taking up how much of yeah, the screen? Where's the hinge? Is the hinge right below the, the white bit? The hinge is right here, yeah, right below the white. Um, yeah, yeah, we haven't really played with this mode too much, so that's interesting. So yeah, I wonder if we can put things into that space between the keyboard and the... Just curious how this measures out. Oh, it looks like it takes up the whole bottom pane. Okay. If you look, it opens up into it. So yeah, I don't know, that's a curious thing to look into though. Can like I wonder if... Rotate it? What do we get? <clears throat> um, I don't know. Mm, that's interesting. Oh, it opens along the whole bottom. Hmm. Hmm. How do we feel about that? I don't know. That's interesting. Seems like it should do a split or something. Yeah, why do I obscure everything on the right-hand side? Now, here, do this. Hot, well, c can, you, can you hot reload an entry to the right pane and then touch into that and see where the keyboard appears? Because part of the patterns and guidance has been around an interaction on one screen should result, like if it's a modal, right? Okay, so in this particular example, I would expect the keyboard to actually be on the right screen. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because that's really... where the interaction was. And so for a modal, for example, you would expect the alert to pop on that screen as opposed to on the primary screen. But I think by default, I'll, I'll, some of these, like this right here, obviously, is being handled by Android. This is not, this is not a forms thing. Yeah, and, and I mean, I, I honestly don't know any more details than, than we're talking about here, but like 
you know, it's early days too, right? There's there's always possibilities. It's an early emulator, so who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, well, you know, I think that everybody's looking for feedback on uh, are these experiences everything that people expect? Is something uh, great you the wrong way, and we need to address it like this? So I will certainly be providing some of this feedback back to our patterns design team. Cool, interesting. All right, back to the chat. We turned it the other way. The bottom right looks wasteful, Lachlan says. He's getting rowdy early in the morning. <laughs> I want one of each. <laughs> Don't we all? So you could type into two at once. Yeah, I would imagine from, um, like, could you split that keyboard and, and be able to use it from both? Because I would imagine the position you're holding it in, right, is you're going to be holding it like this with two hands. This is not a one-hand device, I would imagine, unless you have folded it all the way around. Hey, Pierce Bogan. Hey, we'll build apps. Welcome, everybody. It is a fancy emulator. Uh, Dan, well, and the action buttons, like OK and change, could be on the same screen as the rest of the keyboard. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if some of these things do adapt and change based on the feedback that that we all provide and your primary way of adding feedback for the Xamarin aspect and the Xamarin forms experience is by going to the blog and scheduling a call with us please please uh, how do you simulate the hinge angle Andrew says anyone uh, there, there is a way. Um, one of the, I don't know if it's in the documentation, one of the sensor fields like in the emulator detail pane does it. It's in the virtual sensors, and I forget which one it is. Off oh, I think here it's like it is. Additional. Yeah, all right, I'll go back to sharing. Oh, here. my screen, you were still sharing. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, you opened so, up the properties on the emulator and you went down to virtual sensors. Let's see, additional sensors. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's called something else right now. Like, I, I remember uh, seeing. There was something in the upper right there, didn't it say hinge? It's small on my screen. Uh, magnetic field. Oh, okay. That does not say hinge at all. It's really <laughs> tiny on my screen. Yeah, uh, relative humidity. No, I don't see it on here now. Move, X, Y, Z. And that doesn't even look like a dual screen device right there. Yeah. No, we haven't. We're still working on lighting up some of the, mm -hmm. the hinge APIs. So we haven't, I haven't played with that too much on this device. Uh, let's see, direction pad. As you can see, this is new to everybody. <laughs> this is fun. We're all exploring and learning together. Now, uh, I had asked previously about uh, can you launch an app in, in dual screen mode as opposed to single screen? And it looks like by default right now, things open on one screen and then you have to use that gesture we've been showing to span both screens. But John, you, you said something about is there an ADB command that I can issue and tell it to go to dual screen? There might be an ADB command, but I, I think the guidance is that like your app shouldn't be able to normally control that, and that's like up to the user. All right. Um, so when you said ADB command, you were just guessing. You you didn't have knowledge. Uh, so there, sorry, sorry, there is an ADB command that you can use to like simulate the drag gesture. Okay. Um, right. So it's like a, a that is a, just a normal mm. ADB. So thing like if you're, you're going like, to automate some testing here. or something, you might yeah. need to do some of these yeah. things. So it looks, and it also looks like the pressure sensor is mapped to the hinge sensor in the emulator right now. Sorry, say that again. The, the pressure sensor. So Shane, if you go back into oh, it. Oh, here it is. There. Yeah. But nothing oh, really changes. Yeah, I don't, in, in I, I mean, we'd have to set up like a listener and. and we don't get, we yeah. don't get a, uh, a I don't a think 3D there's visual representation. Feedback. It would be no. great if we had a visual, yeah, if the thing would just suddenly become 3D in space on our desktops. What's, right, what's, what's holding us back from doing that? Let's see if this works. Oh, look at that. It hit a break point because the hinge angle changed. Wing. Pretty exciting. 
So, yeah, I mean, we haven't messed with the hinge angle much, but if you look in, um, I think we watch this stuff. Yeah, there's the hinge service that we've, uh, that we have in here, um, watches for all those events. So, yeah, if you want to use the hinge angle, you can grab the argument from here. So that should just fire into here. And then you can look at this, and here's the ang new angle. So, yeah, I mean, you can kind of do whatever you want with that. So, yeah, it's that's there. It's all wired up and working. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so... Biozal is asking uh, where to download the emulator. Can one of you with a handy link drop it in the chat to the docs? Yeah, let me, let me pull that up. On the machine that I'm chatting on, I just sadly do not have that link ready. I have the, the preview link that we'd been looking at. That doesn't help us at all. Thank you, John. So there's the link in the chat uh, where you can go get all the information about the APIs that we've documented and uh, download the SDK and get the emulator set up. If you have any uh, questions as you go through that, feel free to reach out to myself, Shane, John. Um, at the beginning of this live stream, we did, uh, John did cover how to get things set up and how to get the emulator running. So this video will be available later, and you can just go back and watch that if you'd like. But I think that the instructions are pretty self-explanatory, and they speak and, and specifically to the Xamarin experience. So the, the this... question about the one activity there. In the okay. Too, like it, yeah. It, so the interesting thing with the Duo device is like it's an Android device, and Android technically supports the notion of dual displays. So there's nothing preventing you from like doing a Xamarin Android native app and creating two activities and making that work on these two displays. But from the context of the samples that we've done so far and from the forms experience so far, it is all one activity. Um, that's just a much easier way to to deal with as a developer than to try and figure out like the life cycle and how the, because one of the things with dual displays on Android is like when you focus on the secondary activity, your initial activity basically goes through some of the life cycle events that say like, oh, it's now paused. And this other one's now resumed, and you kind of go back and forth. So um, you could do that if you wanted to, uh, but I feel like there's a lot. It's a lot easier from a, adapting your existing app and kind of making it the code all work in both places on a single screen device and on dual to consider it as just a single activity. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious to to see if we have enough use cases for uh, doing deep navigation um, disconnected between two different panes, right? Like uh, I, I might be be watching a show up here in the top pane and in the bottom pane, I'm, I'm navigating, not just using a browser, but with this within the same app, I want to navigate to different features, right? Whether it's a tabbed page or something similar to that. Um, because the, the architecture of Xamarin Forms is typically one navigation stack, that's it. Um, but this is a situation where I think having independent navigation stacks and contexts makes starts to make sense. Anybody agree? Disagree? How will the lifecycle issues affect, for example, a video playing on one screen while using calendar, mail, etc., on the other? Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how that's handled on like just basic Android. Like that, that's not necessarily a a duo specific question if you're using multiple activities. Mm -hmm. um, but again, like since we're in, in these samples, we're not, we're not using multiple activities. If you had a video plane in, in your one pane of your two pane view and your, you know, an email list in the other, um, that'd be all right. But I guess if you're separate apps completely, yeah, I don't, I don't know how that plays out exactly yet. Um, I think we'll have to get, get some devices to, to test the, that theory out. Cool. Well, I think that's what we got for today. Pretty exciting announcements. I'm excited to get playing with this more myself. Of course, we have the luxury of having more samples to be building, so we already know what we're working on. Um, any final words, John? No, I don't think so. Just go try it out. It's uh, it's 
it's an interesting premise. Love it. It is. Shane, anything uh, before we sign off from you? No, just whatever you play with or whatever you have issues with, just feel free to message us right away with any questions um, so we can unblock you and just see what kind of fun, creative stuff you can do. So yeah, just feel free. Don't don't hesitate to point out issues or ask questions. Um, and then we'll hopefully start getting this stuff trickled into the SDK a bit more so it's a little more natural. But yeah, we're excited. Awesome. Well, as we... No more dates and roadmap stuff. We'll certainly make that available when it's when it's ready for public knowledge. Um, again, please schedule some time with me, with the team. Let's talk about this. Um, this is certainly not the only thing that we have going on. We've got lots of other things happening within Xamarin uh, as we move towards 4.5 and beyond. Dark mode stuff we kind of touched on earlier is coming. Enhancements to shell collection view, but a lot of uh, a lot of inner quality work as well. So um, one of the nice things with doing this work is it's a great excuse for us to build some samples and use it as an excuse to finish out some some functionality and and solve some issues that are blocking us. So yes, making embedded fonts work all the way. I agree. I agree. Uh, if an app is only on one screen, is there a way to be aware of which screen it is on? That is an excellent question. I do not know the answer to. Yeah, check check the APIs that are surfaced right now. I you, would you be probably if it's not there. from an from a native Android perspective. I mean, you should be able to tell where. Maybe not. I was trying to think if you could use your like apps coordinate coordinates uh, based on the screen and you would kind of know like, oh, there's more width to the left of me or more width to the right, the right of me. Uh, and you can kind of tell that way. So that might be one way to go at it. I don't know if there's an API in Android specifically that lets you figure out like where your main, where your current activities context is in, in terms of like screen coordinates or not, but mm -hmm. that's potentially the way. Yeah, I think if, if knowing which screen you're on, uh, you wanted to adapt what your app presented um, I think that would be really interesting. And certainly if something like that is, is super useful for apps, we can surface that at a higher level in Xamarin Forms and make it easily available. Or Xamarin Essentials. It doesn't have to be Forms. It's all Xamarin. Cool. Well, that's what we got for today. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, I will make sure that I get this video up onto YouTube. Feel free to keep chatting in the chat or message us on, on Twitter. Um, definitely get out there and create some really cool stuff and share back to us what you're creating. Maybe we'll build some samples around this and, and you can submit them later for a monkey or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure something out. But anyway, all right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, John. Thanks, Shane. Bye, everyone. See ya.